Hello, hello, it's uh, Mr. Shield here. Uh, if you're watching this, hopefully it's Monday afternoon or Monday morning and you're doing your wider curriculum activity for your remote learning. Well, hello and welcome to Wider Curriculum. Today, it's history. It's history with Mr. Shield. Uh, I teach 4R in year four, but today I'm going to be teaching you about our new history topic. And our new history topic uh, for the next few weeks is going to be all about ancient Persia and ancient Greece, two great civilizations of the ancient world. Uh, and we'll be learning a little bit about ancient Persia today and about someone who's called the King of Kings. Now, hopefully, if technology is working, you should be able to see the presentation. And I'm going to talk you through it and every so often uh, we'll stop. So to do this lesson, uh, you can either have a blank piece of paper and draw stuff or it really helps to have uh, the sheet printed off from Google Classroom, which has kind of three sections to it. Uh, and we'll stop each time when we get to that section and give you some space and time to fill it out. OK. Uh, so anyway, our topic, Persia and Greece, um, two mighty civilizations, and that's what we're going to be learning about, takes place around 2,500 years ago, uh, after the great civilizations of Egypt and Sumer have peaked, but before the Roman Empire comes into being, and you will learn about the Roman Empire later on. Um, today, our learning, uh, our lesson, begins in a place called Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, which is a great word. I love the word Mesopotamia. Try saying it at home, actually. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Mesopotamia. Yeah, you got it now. Uh, this was an ancient region in the Middle East, which is a sort of stretch of land that lies between the great continent of Africa and the great continent of Asia. I I'll show you on a world map. Here you go, here's the world map with all the continents on. You can see Antarctica down there, nice and cold. And you can see North America and South America there. There's Europe, there's us, there's the UK. And just I've circled this sort of stretch of land here in between Africa, in between Asia, uh, and that is known as the Middle East. And thousands of years ago, a large part of this stretch of land was called Mesopotamia. Now in Mesopotamia, thousands of years ago, there was a king called Darius. Uh, and it looks like it's spelt Darius, but it's actually pronounced Darius, Darius. He was so powerful, Darius, that he didn't just have one kingdom, didn't just have his own kingdom. Oh no, oh no, not for Darius. He ruled over kingdoms that belonged to other kings. Darius ruled over that huge stretch of land that we called Mesopotamia. He was the king of kings. Now, back then, Darius was the most powerful person in the entire world. He was the ruler of the most amount of land, the most amount of kingdoms. He had the most amount of money. He was the most powerful person in the world. And we call the territory the land that he had control over, we call that an empire. And Darius ruled over the Persian Empire. And in history, there'll be different empires, different places taking over other countries and lands and territories. There's the Roman Empire, the British Empire. But back then, it was Persia that had the most control over lots of places. So we called it the Persian Empire. Now, on the map, you can see on your screen, this is sort of the, the, the area of Mesopotamia just here. We can see here, this is a showing you all of the Persian Empire, okay? All of the Persian Empire is within this sort of yellow amorphous blob. There it is. Can you even see that Egypt is within the Persian Empire? Egypt is circled here with this blue circle. Darius even ruled over the pharaoh in Egypt. So you can see in the east, Egypt. You can see Persia here in the middle of the Persian Empire. Even over to the west, you've got parts of India and the Indus Valley under control of Darius. So how did Darius 
become this powerful? How did he become the king of kings to rule over such a large stretch of land? Well, to really understand how Darius becomes the king of kings, we have to go back even further. Now, back then, I'll just show you Mesopotamia again, before Persia had all of this land, before Persia controlled all of this in the Persian Empire, you can see lots of different names. Media, Babylonia, Assyria, okay, India, lots of different places. Well, before Darius came along, all of those different places had different kings. And they were all competing, because they were very competitive, those kings, to be the most powerful king in all of Mesopotamia. The kingdom of the Medes, and it's spelt Medes, but it's actually pronounced Medes, wanted to be strong. And the Medes built a huge city to show how strong they were. Well, the Persians from Persia also wanted to be the strongest of all the kingdoms. And in the Persian families, there was one family that stood out, the Achaemenid family. The Achaemenid family were very powerful in Persia. And they, they really wanted to be the most powerful, the most brilliant uh, place in all of Mesopotamia. The Achaemenid family from Persia, they wanted to show everyone else just how great Persia could be. Now, on your sheet, we've got this map here. OK, so let's let's turn to your sheet now and let's look at this first section. We've got this space here. You can see two rivers trailing their way and you can see lots of mountains. And on the screen, hopefully, you can see where I've labelled four important places within this region. There's Medes just here. There we go, look, there's Medes, I'm just wiggling it around there on the screen. Here's Persia, just south there by the mountains. And over, slightly more, slightly more uh, east, in between these two great rivers, we've got this great city of Babylonia. We'll come to that in a minute, or Babylon, okay? And then way off in the east, and this is the River Nile we can see here on the map, by this line, you can, you can see Egypt. So what I'd like you to do is write down those four places on the map on your sheet. Persia, Medes, Babylon and Egypt. Have a look at the screen and then try and write it down on your sheet as well. And if you like, you can even draw a little crown, a little crown by the word Persia, just to signify where Darius, the king of kings, comes from. All right. Now I'm going to give you a, a little bit of time to do that. You can pause the video if you'd like to have some more time to do that. Um, and I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. Ah, lovely. So pause the video if you want to spend a bit more time doing that. You can even colour this map in if you want to. Make it look really nice and colourful. Uh, add the crown in to show where Darius, the king of kings, comes from. That's Persia. Uh, right in the other places. Uh, and when you've done that, you can press play on the video or just move on. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more now about uh, how Persia became really powerful. Now, you might remember that I mentioned an important family within Persia, the uh, Achaemenid family. OK. And the head of that family was a guy called Cyrus. Now, Cyrus, he'll be in history terms, he'll be known as Cyrus the Great which just gives you a little hint that he's destined for big things. Well, Cyrus lived in Persia, but he wasn't completely Persian. He was half Persian and half Median. So he had a sort of connection between Persia and Medes. So I just to remind you that these are some of the two places that are really competing to be as powerful and as important as they can in this great region of Mesopotamia. Now, even though Cyrus was kind of half Persian and half from Medes. It didn't stop him. He lived in Persia. He was part of the Achaemenid family and he wanted Persia to be the strongest. So he attacked Medes and he destroyed their armies and became king of Medes and the king of Persia. So suddenly he was the king of two places. He'd started an empire. 
Now Cyrus the Great has now control of those two places, Medes and Persia. But he was hungry for more. And he looked to the west, outside of Persia. He wanted to be the king of more places, more important places as well. So, looking to the west, he could see between two mighty rivers stood an amazing city, an amazing city called Babylon. Now, at the time, Babylon was one of the most beautiful cities in the ancient world and also one of the wealthiest, which means loads of money. Babylon was a city built of enormous stone and brick buildings. It had this huge wall built all the way around it and it had many beautiful gardens. It was an amazing place. It was so rich. It had all these hugely beautiful buildings and gardens hung from every level and they were called the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. It was one of the fanciest, most amazing places in all of Mesopotamia. And of course, if you're starting an empire, if you're starting taking over places, it's kind of the place you want to take over. And Cyrus the Great, who had just started the Persian Empire, well, he really fancied taking over Babylon. Now, in Babylon, the most important gate into the great city to get into it was called the Gate of Ishtar. The Gate of Ishtar. It's a cool name, isn't it? I like that. But only the king of Babylon was allowed to enter through this gate. No one else. No lords, no merchants, no tradesmen, no common people. And most of the time, the gate was closed. All other Babylonians used other gates to come and go, and traders brought in their goods through those other gates. It was a special part of Babylon. The Ishtar Gate was huge, 50 feet high. And if you can see this image, this is the actual gate, well, an actual reconstruction of the smallest part of the gate. It's in a museum in Berlin, in Germany. And this is the smallest front section of the gate reconstructed in a museum in Babylon. And you can see it's made with these beautiful blue bricks with sort of gold decorations. So you can see in this model on the left here, the smaller gate, which is 50 feet high, and then the larger gate of Ishtar just behind it. Look at that. It almost looks a bit like the front of a castle, right? And that brings us to the second part of our sheet. And what I'd like you to do on the second part of your sheet is draw a diagram or a quick picture of the gates of Ishtar in this ancient city of Babylon. So you can make it look a bit like a castle. You can draw little gold animals going down either side of the large columns here. You can draw the wide open doors, the sort of jagged uh, tops to the gate of Ishtar. That would be really good as well. So this is the second part of the sheet, just below where the map of Mesopotamia is. You can draw the gates of Ishtar and you can pause the video while you do it, uh, make a good job of it. And then you can put it onto Google Classroom a little bit later. OK, 50 feet high. I wonder how big the biggest gate would have been. It looks almost double the height, 100 feet. My goodness, that's huge and amazing. Now, Cyrus, you might remember, had Persian half Medes, had taken over Persia and Medes and was now the king of two places. Well, he wanted to get rid of the king of Babylon. He wanted to be the new king of Babylon. But he knew one thing. He knew that the people who lived in Babylon, they didn't actually like their king. They didn't think he was a great king. They kind of felt he was the pit. Well, Cyrus, the Persian king, came up with a cunning plan to take over Babylon without any violence and without any battles. He wanted the people of Babylon to trust him. So he sent a message to the people of Babylon, promising to get rid of the unpopular king and that he would not change their ways of doing things. So basically he was saying to the people of Babylon, hey, listen, you throw your king out, I will come and be the ruler, but I won't change, I won't change a thing. You can do whatever you want. You can run the city your way. I'll be your king, 
but I, I won't be mean or unpopular like the king you've got now. I'll be a better king. And all you have to do is get rid of him. Well, Cyrus's cunning idea worked. The people of Babylon opened their gates to let him in. Cyrus marched in with his army and he captured the king. And they opened all the gates, the gates of Ishtar, the trading gates. The army just waltzed in without fighting a single battle. They got rid of the king and Cyrus became the leader of Babylon. All right, let's just double check our learning so far. Darius is known as the king of kings, okay? The leader of the Persian empire. But he didn't create the Persian empire. He made it great, he made it huge, he made it massive. But it was actually begun by Cyrus, the king of Persia, who took over another kingdom called Medes. Cyrus wanted to conquer other kingdoms. He wanted more. And he convinced the people of Babylon to throw out their king and put him in charge. So that's what we've learned so far. We've also learned that in Babylon, it was a rich, beautiful ancient city with these great gates called the Gates of Ishtar. Now, when Cyrus the Great arrived in Babylon, he didn't go to the king's palace. Oh, no, no, no. He went to a religious temple. And the people in the city of Babylon watched as Cyrus showed respect to the Babylonian gods. So he worshipped the Babylonian gods. And the Babylonian people loved him for doing that. They thought it showed great respect. He promised to look after the Babylonian people if they paid their taxes to him. And the people of Babylon agreed. So Cyrus became their king. He now ruled over several cities and kingdoms. He was ruling over an empire. Now, the last part of today's lesson, really, and I'll just move these words out. I don't know if I'm in the way or not. The last part of today's lesson is just to fill in the gaps, okay? So here we've got something was known as the King of Kings. And on the screen, you should be able to see a choice of five words there, okay? Something was known as the King of Kings. He was a leader of the Persian, what could it be? He was the leader of the Persian, oh, we're missing a word actually. I'm sorry about that. Look at this. Let me add another word in. And I won't give you a little hint. Well, I probably will now, but he was a leader the Persian Empire. So that's how you do it. You'd have to write empire in there. Now, the name of the king who began the empire by taking over the kingdom of Medes was called something. And he wanted to take over a wealthy kingdom called something. I won't spoil that one. And he decided to offer the people of the kingdom a deal. If they opened their something, he'd get rid of their king and treat the people something. All right. So there are the missing uh, words that you need to fill in. You should be able to see it on your sheet. Um, the words are here on the screen. So pause the video if you like, just so you can see those words. Um, I think slightly when I look at this, my face is in the way, which is no good, is it? So there we go. Now, you should be able to see those words, choose which one goes where, and in it goes. Now, in our next lesson on history, we'll look a little bit more about what Cyrus did. And then Darius, the king of kings, comes after him. And we'll look a little bit more about how Darius expanded the Persian Empire and made it even bigger. OK, I'm going to stop there. Uh, I hope you have a lovely day. Good luck with your learning. If you do need to go back and look at the words, you can just rewind and pause. All right. Take care. See you soon.